This is Saudi Arabia. What comes to mind when you hear the name of the country? Probably its oil-rich royal family, desert landscape, its unique people and culture, perhaps its very hot temperature. But you would be surprised to know that Saudi Arabia has relatively green provinces like here in this region by the border with Yemen, the Asr region. This region lining the mountainous border with Yemen has a different climate than the rest of Saudi Arabia. Not only this location, but there are many other spots like these ones dotted across the country that are green due to unique combinations of climate and landscape. But today we're going to look at how through time in various natural and man-made instances, these very scarce green areas are being desertified and how the country took action to restore and save its green land. Let's see how Saudi Arabia is dealing with expanding deserts and how they are slowly winning. Looking from a map, you would be surprised to know that Saudi Arabia is a food exporter. Yes, you heard that right. The country with no flowing rivers inside it still manages to export food. But due to the unsustainable process they are using to create this result, it will be very short-lived as the expanding desert is a real threat. Saudi Arabia had various plans in place to combat desertification. Just like their oil underneath their land, they also have a large underground aquifer of water from ancient times. Using their newly earned wells from oil, they reinvested it into various farming schemes, one of which was pumping water from the ground and creating a circular patch of farmland, a method known as center pivot irrigation. These farms may seem like tiny dots, but they can have a diameter ranging from 300 meters to as big as 3 kilometers. Due to these endeavors, Land under cultivation grew from under 400,000 acres in 1976 to more than 8 million acres in 1993. However, this will not be a long-lasting solution. The type of plants they decided to plant required a lot of upkeep since they were water thirsty, making the sustainability of the system very low. This type of monocultural farming cannot retain water in the long run. And the main problem is that Saudi Arabia is estimated to have already used up four-fifths of their water reserves making this newly created oasis easy to be gobbled up by the desert in just a few decades as soon as the water pumps run dry. This is because of the little rainfall in the region making the aquifers unable to regenerate during the wet seasons. Since the farms are taking more than is going in, the depletion rate is very rapid. The country noticed this dire situation and has now bought or leased a lot of farmland like here in Ethiopia's Gambella region where they managed to get a 60-year lease on about 25,000 acres of farmland. Or recently here in Arizona, where they managed to purchase 10,000 acres and also got rights to use the water wells of the area. But this doesn't solve the problem at home. The desertification still continues to happen. One major example was a place called Al-Baida, one of the naturally green places in Saudi Arabia which is located here. This green area was relatively stable for many years but gradually it degraded when the traditionally Bedouin population of the area settled down from a more nomadic lifestyle. When this happened, more and more of their herds of livestock started to overgraze the land more than they have ever had in history and without allowing it time to recover. This combined with the people cutting down trees made the area prone to flash floods. Because of the sporadic seasonal rains, the water that would have been absorbed by the soil was now washing itself into the Red Sea. This is when the government decided to take action. They invited experts like Neil Spackman from across the globe to work on the problem and find a lasting solution. Spackman lived in the area for about 8 years until 2018, studying the way the locals live and the environment very closely. This close observation gave way for the idea to build rock terraces, dams and swales. Techniques that were used by ancient civilizations like the Incans inspired the project ideas. The water was aided to flow in a constant stream-like structure that was conserved and held throughout the drought seasons. Then they slowly moved into planting thousands of drought-resistant native species of trees. The project eventually fell off due to lack of funds and attention and was slowly being abandoned. But when the rains finally came after a long season of drought, the seeds that were left behind suddenly grew trees. The quality of the project was so good that most of it was left intact, helping in the regreening of the area by itself. This proved to be a success for the project and now the country has plans to plant millions of trees and replicate this method throughout the country. This shows that even in places such as Saudi Arabia where there are no rivers and little rain, 
Regreening is very much possible if focus and resources are put towards the cause. If you want to know how this animal destroyed North Korea, check out this video. And if you want to know why Canada is very sparsely populated, check this one out. Thank you for watching and liking this video. It would mean a lot if you subscribe. Thank you for watching.